Hello everyone and welcome. Recently I attended Northwest Automotive Press Association's Mudfest, which is an event where you test out a bunch of different SUVs and trucks which all have all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. And so at this, instead of doing a review on a select few of these vehicles, I thought what I would do is one performance test amongst all 27 vehicles there. And so that's what I did. And so what I tested was the braking distance uh, on the road from 60 miles per hour to zero miles per hour. I also did a little bit of off-road testing, uh, but we'll get into that later. Um, but one of the more shocking things that I found out through this testing uh, was the Nissan Titan, which braked from 60 miles per hour to zero in 132.9 feet versus a Mini Cooper Countryman, which uh, braked from 60 miles per hour to zero in 134.1 feet. So a Nissan Titan weighing 5,811 pounds uh, outbraked a Mini Cooper weighing 3,629 pounds. Heavy for a Mini Cooper, yes, but still, you know, 2,000 some pounds lighter than the Nissan Titan. So we've got a lot of questions here and I'm sure you've got a lot of questions here. Can we trust this information? And if we can trust this information, how did that Nissan achieve such an incredible stopping distance in comparison? So what was the test? Well, the test was very simple. They have a little go-kart track, which has this long straightaway on it, which we were driving. Uh, and I would accelerate past 60 miles per hour, slam the brakes uh, and use a full ABS stop. Now I use this device right here to record the 60 to zero time. So the second it hits 60 miles per hour, this starts recording. And then once it hits zero miles per hour, this stops recording and gives you that information. Uh, and so there's a reason why I do that. I'll get into why I go past 60 miles per hour. Uh, in the Titan, I accelerated up to 64.7. In the Mini, I was at 63.5. Um, now, you know, part of the thing is, can we trust this? And what's cool about this, even though it's a consumer product and not the professional ones that cost like five or 10 grand, this still uses about 10 satellites and you can go in online and, you know, plug in your data and see how many satellites you had locked in on your vehicle. So it uses about 10 satellites to exactly locate where your vehicle is and it has a 20 hertz GPS engine. So it's accurate to the 20th of a second. Uh, it's updating every 20 times per second. And so they say that they can give you speed uh, with an accuracy within 0.1 kilometer per hour, which is incredibly impressive. This is Race Logic's claim about the product and that they can give you G forces within half a percent uh, of you know, accuracy. So super accurate device, even though it is a consumer product, um, but it's got some pretty impressive hardware inside of it. Uh, and you know, the fact that you're using 10 satellites, you can get a really good idea of your location. So that's how the test was done. It's on this uh, road surface, which is well-maintained. It's an even surface and it was dry for both of these tests. Now in the video, I'll show you of, you know, what this looks like. The morning was a little wet. It wasn't raining, uh, but the track was a little wet. There wasn't any standing water or anything like that. Um, but just to ease uh, your confidence in this information, I did take a Nissan Armada at the beginning of the day and the end of the day once it had gotten completely dry and there was only a two foot difference in its stopping distance uh, between those two. Um, and so, you know, not a huge change on the track. It looks kind of wet, but it really wasn't, not really much water on it. And when these two were tested, it was both later in the day, both of them on a dry track. Okay, a lot of variables out of the way. Let's talk about ABS stopping. And so what I've got here is a graph um, of G's on the vertical axis and distance on the horizontal axis. And so what happens when I slam that brake pedal, the G forces of deceleration are going to start to increase. And you have this line right here. This line right here is the tire's ultimate level of grip. That's the maximum grip that that tire can provide. Um, and this line right here of G's is a bit exaggerated, but it's to help illustrate the point. So when you slam on the brakes, you're going to get eventually to that tire grip level. It'll go slightly past it and you'll have a certain amount of slip that allows for just slightly higher uh, grip. And then once you lock that wheel up, your grip is going to rapidly decrease. And so once that wheel's locked up, your ABS kicks in and it says, whoa, hold on, let off the brake pressure. It re-catches that tire uh, and then lets it continue to rotate. And then you go back over, back under, back over until you finally find you know, the perfect area. The ABS is trying to hunt down that tire grip limit and just float right there at that limit. And so when you slam the brakes, uh, is extremely important for knowing, you know, how fast the vehicle stopped for that stopping distance. For example, 
if you were to hit 60 miles right here, 60 miles per hour right here and start recording with this little hump right here where you've got, you know, higher, uh, your highest peak grip possible, and then you dip down versus if you hit 60 miles per hour right here where you're still dipping under that because the tire just locked up, then you're going to have a longer stopping distance uh, if 60 is hit here than if 60 is hit here where you've got that, you know, arc where you're stopping a little bit quicker, a higher peak G-force. And you know, at 60 miles per hour, every 10th of a second, you're going 8.8 .8 feet. So super important why, uh, how that is done. Now, the reason why I accelerated past 60 to 64.7 and 63.5, uh, that was just basically the highest speeds I could get to before needing to slam on the brakes, uh, is I wanted to make sure that we had kind of started to level off in that uh, before you know we got to 60. I didn't want to stop just at 60 uh, because then who knows what the ABS is doing. I want it to be as even as possible. Um, now the professionals at Motor Trend, Car and Driver, Road and Track, uh, they're gonna use a brake switch, a pressure switch on the brake. Uh, it's a different, more expensive way of doing it. Um, it's not a $400 test, uh, but you can actually get pretty decently accurate results, uh, in my opinion, by doing it this way. So brake well before 60, have ABS kick in, uh, but there still will, will be some variability. So if the Titan is able to more accurately find this tire grip limit, it may be able to stop faster than if the Mini is able to find this tire grip limit. Of course, that tire grip limit can differ depending on the tire. Both of these have different tires, so one of them may be higher than the other, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. So now we have to discuss, can we trust the data of the two stopping distances, the 134 for the Mini and the 132.9 for the Nissan Titan? And so if you look at a graph of the speed versus time data for both of these vehicles, what you wanna see is a nice linear progression uh, from 60 miles per hour down to zero. And it can get a little wacky at the very end, uh, around like two miles per hour when your ABS sensors, when your wheel sensors can't accurately track speed as well. Uh, but at that point, you're not really moving much at all. You're basically just kind of coming to that final stop. Uh, so it doesn't really add any distance. Basically what you wanna see is from about 60 down to like five miles per hour or less, a perfect linear curve there. And that lets you know that there really wasn't much slipping going on. If you did have a little kink in that line, uh, that would be indicative of the fact that you probably hit a little patch there or just locked up completely, started sliding so your G-force wasn't quite as high, and then you started dropping back down once ABS figured out, hey, we're sliding, we need to fix this. Uh, so you can look at both graphs for both vehicles, and both of them have a nice linear curve. So that tells us that we can really trust that data because there was no sliding in either case. Both of them had a nice linear deceleration. Okay, so here's the part where we continue to talk about tires. Uh, I know I talk about tires all the time, but they're fascinating, they're super cool, and you know, there's a tremendous amount of difference out there. So, the Nissan Titan is on General Grabber APT all-terrain tires. These are not, uh, you know, basically made for just the road. They're made for off-road as well. The Mini is on Pirelli Cinturato, that's my best Italian uh, impression, P7 tires, uh, all-season tires. So they are really made for the road, not made for off-road. And actually I did some off-road testing. Uh, the Nissan Titan absolutely destroyed the Mini off-road, something like uh, 10 feet uh, quicker from 20 miles per hour, not 60 miles per hour. So it was a, a huge difference off-road. But regardless, this is an all-terrain tire used on the road. And this is a Pirelli uh, all-season tire uh, used on the road. Now, Tire Rack, coincidentally, had some testing on this Pirelli tire and they did it in a BMW 328i, and they had a 92.3 foot stopping distance from 50 miles per hour. So I looked at my data, my 50 to zero in the Mini Cooper on the same tires from 50 miles per hour was 92.2 feet. So incredibly close, and that gave me a lot of confidence in the data uh, because Tire Rack basically had the same results. So super neat to see. Um, and basically what that tells you is that this Pirelli tire honestly isn't that great. Looking at the rest of Tire Rack's data, uh, they were comparing this versus three other tires, uh, braking both wet and dry, this was the worst of the four, cornering uh, in the wet, this was the worst, and in the dry, this was coincidentally the best of all those four tires they were testing. Uh, so the one thing that it had going for it was dry cornering, uh, but it still wasn't all that high, 0.84 Gs. I mean, it's good but it, for an all season, but it's not, you know, incredible. Uh, so honestly, this tire, this Pirelli P7 tire, isn't all that impressive. Um, 
and these General Grabber tires, the fact that they're all-terrain tires do really well off-road, but also really well on-road is pretty impressive. Now, one final data point, Motor Trend Truck of the Year uh, for 2017, or I believe it's 2017, is the Nissan Titan. And so one of their tests that they do is a 60 to zero with full payload. So whatever the rated payload for this Nissan Titan is, something like 1,500 pounds or so, uh, they do a, a 60 to zero test. And they did that in 133.83 feet. So a super impressive stopping distance for this Nissan Titan. It was the best of the trucks they tested. Uh, and it, you know, I was speaking with Nissan about this. They said the truck has best in class braking, uh, which I believe it has tremendous braking. So it's a combination of several things. Uh, it's got great tires. It's got great brakes, obviously, that can handle the stopping, uh, even with all the weight that's in it. And it has a very well-tuned vehicle dynamic control system for the ABS so that it, you know, it hunts down that tire grip limit and it sticks it right there, uh, keeps it at that grip limit so you can get the best possible braking. So super impressive uh, work out of the Nissan Titan, what they've been able to do with so much weight in a vehicle, kind of contradicting what you might intuitively think uh, using great tires, great brakes, and great tuning. So thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.